Hello, everybody. Uh, we will get going in just a moment here. I'm just going to pull up the PDF file uh, for the tasting. Hopefully, you guys have your uh, lineup poured. Uh, Harmony, are you able to copy and paste that in test into the uh, chat just in case for those people that missed it? Yeah. Thank you. It didn't copy the numbers, though, but it's the right order. Yeah. Okay, so we are starting with uh, ba -ba 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 pleasing and delightful. Uh, next up is Diet Peat, which is a weird spot to have a peated whiskey at number two, but we'll see how that works. Uh, after that is Dark and Stormy Creme Brulee. Following up at number four is Fit for a King. Number five is My Granny's Old Shed. Number six is a number that you guys, some of you might be familiar with or a, a name, which is Will You Join the Worm Tub Club? And then we are going to finish off with Down With Subtlety. So let's dive in with whiskey number one. Yeah. That's got a very pretty nose. Yeah, pretty bright, eh? Yeah. Oh, it's bright. <clears throat> very bright. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm getting uh, some nice fruit notes on there, uh, a little bit of vanilla, but it's also got a little bit of uh, Play-Doh or Plasticine for me. Yeah, see that with that saltiness in there? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Tasting note Open references well. a new marble slab, which I find an interesting turn of phrase. I wonder if that's a reference to maybe some minerality. Mm -hmm. And it smells like um, if somebody's working, putting marble slab somewhere and you've got that, uh, the smell mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. It also does have a bit of marble slab cake where you get this combination of chocolate and coconut and like icing sugar to it. Marble slab cake. All right. So mm -hmm. I was thinking quite literally, so I don't know what they're referring to. Cake <laughs> or stone? <laughs> The scent of a new marble slab as opposed to an old marble slab. So I'm, I feel like it's the stone because you mm -hmm. wouldn't say a new marble slab like a fresh cake. You would That would be implied. <laughs> Maybe the marble slab cake was old enough that you were able to cut it up and use it for your countertop. All right, hope not. <laughs> mm. Tasty, it's got a little bit of a... Uh, sorry, go ahead, Harmony. I was going to say, I'm getting like nice apricots and... Like fresh apricots on this for me and mm -hmm. some lemon. There's some uh, strawberry and strawberry yogurt notes uh, for me on the palate right now. Happy New Year, everybody, by the way. Yeah, definitely a, a minerality in it on mm -hmm. the on the palate. Get the pepper. Hey, there's mm -hmm. a kick to it for sure. Yeah, it's got some kick. Just add a few drops of water. I'm going to do it on the first round this time, just for kicks. Honestly, don't think it helps the nose much. You did. You did a couple of drops of water in there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe a little bit of uh, cotton candy and cake fondant still, but uh, really tones down the nose for me. Oh, yeah. And like um, mm -hmm. pineapple and like icing sugar. Like that one really sticks out to me. Evan, that tasting mm -hmm. note you said icing sugar. Oh. Yeah, definitely get the comment about perfume. Yeah. Yeah, pellets uh, maybe a little bit more floral and a little bit more spicy yeah. with uh, with water. With water, yeah. Um, Chris Walker says tastes like yogurt covered in covered with fruit candies. I can see where you're going with that. Will Christie says perfume, cotton candy, cardboard, and wax, which I think uh, is a pretty good summary there. Good starter. 
Yeah, Harmony, your icing sugar reference with water. God, that's all I'm getting is just yeah. icing yeah. sugar. Big fresh, yeah. from the, fresh from the sifter into your bowl. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, you made it yourself at home. Oh. Just, yeah. Wow. Very nice. Hmm. But it, it like it has a minerality with water that finishes like the flavor of chalk, but not the texture. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's very much in the finish for me, that minerality. It's yeah. better with water. This one. It really takes water well. It's yeah. really good with water. I, mm. I prefer the palate with water. The nose is just too muted for me. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, just, yeah. Maybe you put in too much. I love what it did to the nose. Could be. I put in so, too much. Uh, for that Which chalk note, it, like went away for me with water, the nose. For, for that chalk note, I'm going to say it's yellow chalk because it's got a little bit of a lemony note to it, <laughs> yeah. which I assume yellow chalk does. So, sure, <laughs> sure that's how it's made. It's like, mm -hmm. like the yellow Sharpie, the lemon Sharpie. Yeah. Yeah. That palette still stands. They make the yellow yeah. lines on the road too. They just squeeze right. lemons on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes sense. It's, I mean, they use, uh, what is it? They use lime for football fields, don't they? Or no, that would burn. <laughs> okay. Up next is uh, Diet Pete sitting in the number two spot for some reason. Well, you could explain why. What's good yeah. diet? <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, yeah, it's all the NutraSweet guys. It, the, it just doesn't have the weight of real sugar. Calorie free. That's right. If only. Yeah. It's got to be fewer, right? Still half, <laughs> less than half a banana. Then, if there's peat on here on the nose, it is very light. It's like, it shows itself right at the beginning and then immediately hides itself. Yep. Yeah. Um, it, it's all the fruit. To me, the, the nose is like, it's, it's like the... Somebody had a s'more like about 15 minutes ago and, and you can still smell it in the room, but that's about it. Oh, I'm not, I'm not even there. I'm just getting lemon meringue pie. Oh, good call. Yeah. For me, it's like lemon and, and like honey nut Cheerios. It's also like, uh, maybe not as much of the rubbery side, but it's like opening up a new, uh, shoe box with Converse, uh, Converse shoes in it, the cloth ones, the Chucks, or the All Stars. Given I haven't done that since eighth grade, um, <laughs> they I had shoes my, back then. Uh, oh, that's when I had my first pair of Converse. Yeah, <laughs> hey, that's Rob. You've gotten far, far further in life than me for before having a midlife crisis. Then I guess <laughs> I had my first at twenty. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that is the, that's just like there's like a band aid kind yeah. of medicinal yeah. note, like on the palate with that peat. It's not it's not big and huge, um, but it's there. And then the lemon still comes around yeah. on that. Fruit. Is it, lemon and sandalwood? Is it, a, is it a cloth band aid or one of those new 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 age plastic ones? Oh, it's definitely new age plastic. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's like you put a a, a band aid on a glazed donut on the on the palate. Like a lemon glaze. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love right. it. Oh, mm -hmm. it's great. I just like that subtle peat. It's it's wonderful. it is super subtle. Like I get it mm -hmm. on the palate more than I do with the nose, but even there, it's not. It's it's nowhere near a hit you over the head with it kind of kind of whiskey. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it diet peat. I'd call it baby peat. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. There's also a nice kind of like can't quite tell if it's menthol or eucalyptus, but it's like that something cooling on the finish, that yeah. cooling finish. That's a good call. I'm gonna try water on this one just because I'm super curious what'll happen. Yeah, I'm I just afraid to. It. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, yeah. That's the whiskey just disappeared when I put the water in. It's it's just not there anymore. Mm -hmm. You need oh, that, water. that menthol, like camphor, yeah. like 
that does come out on the nose with a few drops a bit more. Um, I'm sticking with my shoebox note uh, on there as well. I think that comes out even more for me on the nose. Yeah. Some really light grain notes. Yeah. Like there's... what, Evan? Light grain, like oh. just grain, grain in the background kind of wafting away, but um if the if the first one was all fondant, this is the cake uh for me on the nose <laughs> and palate. I thought you said light rain, which made me think of petrichor. Mm -hmm. Which maybe could apply here. That sort of fresh, earthy. I mean, to call this peated for me is just such a stretch. Um it's but there is that minor medicinal. Not, yeah. yeah. Will in the chat said a mineral and flint and shale on the edge of a lake. Mm -hmm. Like the marble cool. slab. Yep. <laughs> That's a really fun That's a lovely drink. whiskey. Yeah, it is. And and putting it second with the amount of peat, it's not going to kill your palate. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, oh, not at all. Maybe, uh, no. maybe it'll just completely overpower number three. No, I kind of doubt it, but I can just see uh, the tasting panel in Edinburgh going over this one and delib deliberating, deliberating what flavor profile to put in because I think it could have yeah. gone into oily and coastal as well. Like lightly peated totally. is is <laughs> yeah, it's barely there, mm -hmm. um, but it wouldn't have easily slotted into really anything else because there is that thread of peat. So this yeah. must have been a really fun one for them to figure out. Yeah, I agree. Well, let's uh, let's try number three, Dark and Story Me Creme Brulee. Mm. And I should say for those of you, uh, I missed it at the beginning, but if it is anybody's first time at a Scotch Malt Whiskey Society tasting with us, uh, we do this twice. So we're doing the lightning round right now where we just talk about what we know and taste. Uh, keep some in your glass if you can, and we'll go through it a second time where we reveal uh, which bottles these are from, which distillery they're from, which region how old the bottle is and uh, how much it's going to cost you. Ooh, so much fruitier on the nose for number three. If you've poured like, out uh, all seven um, at the start, I was quite struck at the color range tonight. There's a lot of beautiful color totally. whiskeys here, which means nothing, but it just is pretty to look at. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> this is the uh, same thought and thought, oh, it's almost almost in color order. But that's right. three and four just need to yep. switch. It's very beautiful. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Full disclosure this time, guys. I just did it based on a chroma, like the the chromatograph or whatever, like just based on color, <laughs> not on on how it goes or tasted. Um, this one is like uh, Skittles meets root beer candies for me right oh, now. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. totally the root beer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And almost an effervescence with it too. There's a yeah. fizziness without it actually being carbonated. There's <clears throat> something really cool on, on the palate. Totally. Yeah, almost going so, a little bit waxier than Skittles, going into Starburst candies for me right now on the palate. This one reminds me of those old bottle cap. Yeah. Um, chewy things you used to get. Oh. Mm -hmm. As soon as I took a swig, it was it took me right back. Mm, that's awesome. That's brilliant because that also has to do with the the feel in the mouth. Like those kind of mm -hmm. those bottle yeah. cap candies were had a fizz to, had a fizz to them. So yeah, that, that tingliness. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not getting as much the creme brulee as I am the the dark and stormy right now. Yeah, I'm getting more like uh, chocolate, faint anise or licorice and like black cherry black cherry is a good call going into like uh not not dr pepper but the the cherry cola like cherry coca-cola it's <laughs> a good one yeah I'm gonna try that with water I'll join you with some water. Mm. 
more more of those like rum raisins with water. Mm -hmm. A little bit more like earthy and, and root driven, Earth like going into sarsaparilla notes on the palate. Definitely drier. Mm -hmm. or still get that cherry note, as you said. Yeah. To me, though, it's it's definitely leaning into like black licorice. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever those candies are with like the red, the red ends, the red spots. Mm -hmm. all, licorice all sorts, but it's not overpowering. It's not dominating. It's just there. No. Uh, Chris says the palate reminds me a bit of elixir of euphoria. Will Christy says some cinnamon hearts. Yeah, I can get the cinnamons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. 50%. That was, a, that was a fun first three. Definitely goes in a lot of different directions there. Yeah, a lot of variety. Love the nose on this one. It is cinnamon mm -hmm. hearts. Mm. Yeah, I could just nose that one all day. That's great. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely the most expressive of the, of the first three. Mm -hmm. I'm getting uh, Play-Doh on both the uh, first two now. <laughs> just nosing them again. <laughs> okay, on to number four, which is Fit for a King. Started his life in a second, or sorry, entirety of its life was spent in a second Felix bourbon barrel. 208 bottles, 64.4%, which is the highest we've had so far in the lineup. This one's gone from Play-Doh to clay for me. First thing I popped in my head when I noticed it was laundry. Dirty laundry or you know, like laundry? fresh laundry type of thing. I don't know. Yeah. For me, it was apples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see the apple too. It's 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 not like a big sort of like sweet sort of candied version of apple. It's more like the apple skins. Yeah. Yeah, it's smelling an apple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I actually find this quite a closed nose compared to the yeah. ones we had so far. I'm I I'm having to work at it. This is not as expressive for me as the others. Do you think this was going Agreed. to be an easy job? <sighs> With um, that's, <laughs> if this distillery has a standard, and it's hard to say it does uh, based on what I've had, but it, that it's never mm -hmm. super expressive on the nose from what I, I've recalled from previous bottlings of theirs. Yeah. A little bit of Weedabix cereal in there. Oof. Cask isn't, palette. Cask isn't toasted by chance, is it? Tastes a little toasted to me. It does have that, doesn't it? No, it's it's just second fill ex bourbon. Um, so there's some definite spiciness to it, though. <laughs> yeah, not what I was expecting from the nose that I could barely get anything. <laughs> totally, out of. it's what? so it's different, nice and <laughs> it's so it's spicy. Me. It's like throwing me off to think like it's some sort of like a seasoned meat. Um, for me, like probably not what they were going for, but maybe this is the distillery they used in the the those mini bottles that you get, we were talking about before. <laughs> well, that yeah, I, I, <laughs> wow, that's just that just made me smile. That it was so much fun, so unexpected. Yeah, it's got like uh, something like it. There's some some capsicum like peppery notes to it but it's mm -hmm. almost into like it's not frank's it's it's sriracha uh on the palate right now that heat that's crazy wondering where like the you name put comes sriracha from. sauce in your oatmeal <laughs> what's that harmony sorry i said i'm curious on where the name comes from on this one yeah. That is great. Mm -hmm. There's oh so God. much on this. It's almost hard to pinpoint exactly what it is. Yeah. It's just 
fun for me. It just kind of makes me smile. Yeah. Well, the, and you look at the, the society's notes for the palate, they say on the palate, it was like this, a spiced green gauge chutney, which I haven't had, uh, but made using chili, turmeric, mustard seeds, and ginger. Mm -hmm. kind of yeah. well, I um, still say sriracha personally, but. Again, those things I would use on like a roast rub. <laughs> so yep. to me, it reminded me of like a roast, um, but there's still this like, this freshness about it and at the same time this dry finish um it's wild there's a lot going on there is i have a, a, a sneaking suspicion that it will take water well i will uh, i tried it with water and it's it's almost like i didn't uh there <laughs> there it, it maybe stretched out the palate a bit more like before the the fruit and this creaminess came in before the spice really took over. Um, but there wasn't a massive change, I wouldn't say, in what you get off it. Probably because of the 64.4% alcohol as much as anything else. I think it gets hotter, spicier mm -hmm. with water. Big time. And it reminds me of this like, uh, like long pepper, Japanese mm -hmm. long peppers. That's a note that sticks out for me. Cool. Yeah, that's a cool one. It's really cool. <laughs> yep, water intensifies it. That's crazy. <laughs> what a crazy whiskey. Oh my God. <laughs> so this is not the experimental cast then. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Oh, they, yeah, the, the society is going to have to start giving it, what is it, Scoble units or whatever, the, the spice <laughs> measurement on, on uh, the society bowls. That one was just really fun. Yeah. Holy cow. How many thousand ghost peppers is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, on it. to number five in our uh, lightning round, my granny's old shed, which <laughs> this is such an awesome name because it's got to evoke some memories for a lot of people look at that color beautiful yeah. isn't it that's gorgeous mm, that's a beautiful nose. nose holy cow a, a leathery uh, earthiness yep but welch's red grape juice plus pink grapefruit juice or ruby grapefruit juice right now Ooh. like grape and grapefruit at the same time for me right now I get the Welch's grape, yep. But I do, I do get potting shed, absolutely. Right, yeah. an earthiness. Uh, yeah, yeah just a, a, a dust, little bit. A, a dirt. Dustiness. Dustiness, yeah. It's yeah, that, that's almost like reminiscent of something PD there at the very, very finish, but it's my guess is, is it's barrel char and dunnage. Mm -hmm. Um. This guy started his life in an ex-bourbon hogshead. Uh, it was finished in a first fill PX mm -hmm. hogshead. 56.3% alcohol on this one. I think this could almost be old and dignified. Mm -hmm. Just got beautiful, calm balance to it. That's a... Calm, that's a good word. That's fireplace really dram. Calm, mm -hmm. elegant. Yeah. Beautiful whiskey. Oh, there's that <laughs> leathery earthiness at the finish. It's all over the finish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris's uh, note on this one is awesome. <laughs> you tell. We don't have the chat up on the screen. Yeah. So Chris Walker says, I get, I've fallen down in my shed and I can't get up. <laughs> Stay down. You're good. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Take the glass with Someone you. You're good. Have, yeah. Someone yeah. should have had their Medicaid bracelet on, obviously. <laughs> this is lovely. It does have yeah. a bit of like licorice and root beer candies now going on in the nose. Haven't added water yet, but I'm going to just for kicks. But uh, that combination of fruity and earthy and uh, with mm -hmm. the tobacco notes and leather as well is really yeah. cool. Yeah. There's also like this nice kind of like earthy ginger uh, yeah. in, that sticks out for me. Chocolate covered ginger candies. 
Yeah. Hey, I get me some of those. That sounds great. Mm -hmm. This is the the adult so far in the lineup. Yeah, it's beautiful. Much more expressive nose for me than the one before. Really Very elegant. Much. Very much. Will yeah. says uh, vanilla walnut nougat. Mm. Walnut is a good call. And the nougat. Yeah, good call. Um, mm. I think that walnut note comes out even more with uh, water. It is water actually does really well in this one, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fall apart. Uh, I'm really impressed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, water is Granny's friend for sure. <laughs> keeps keeps you loose. <laughs> if the tasting note is saying that water improved it significantly, that must mean something because it was pretty good to begin with. <laughs> it. I, I don't know if it's better, but I'm I'm utterly shocked. Like usually you see uh ex sherry cask or a wine cask as the finish and it's gonna just for me it becomes disjointed where you get the first barrel and then the second barrel and they just like pull each other apart with water but this one just stays together so nicely mm -hmm. i prefer without we didn't put very much in but I, it, it, yeah hmm I'd agree. I prefer it without, but it's fine with it. It didn't, yeah, as, as Evan yeah. said, it didn't take it down. It didn't. Yeah, it yes. didn't. It didn't, um, it didn't fall apart. No. Along with that charry note, that earthiness, it's going into mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit of like a mushroom note, uh, like a cooked mushroom note on the palate for me with water. Interesting. Yeah. That's a fun one. I get more. I get more so um, like uh, boiled prunes. Like mm -hmm. you're like condensing that fruit down. More and more, yep. and you got it. That's beautiful. Very fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to number six. Will you join the Worm Tub Club? So this started its life in ex-bourbon. Uh, it was finished in a first fill Oloroso. Uh, distilled on my birthday, 13th of June. I didn't notice that. 56.9% uh, oh. alcohol. I love the nose on this one. Do you know in the 12 years we've been doing this, I've never once come across a bottle distilled on my birthday. And I don't even mean the year, I just mean October 20th. Not once. Wow. <laughs> just that, considering how many bottles we release every year. Is that your birthday? Is that my birthday? What? Um, well, your yeah, birthday is I, like a, isn't it a national holiday in Scotland because it's your birthday? Maybe that's yeah, why. pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. You'd think they would, you'd think everybody would be busy distilling that day, but no. Yeah. Holy root closes, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's okay. I have the same problem. Find many with my birthday either. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't expect to see the birth year because that's just getting ridiculously old, but really of the. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bottles we released. Not one on October 20th. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna start looking for that on our next allocations. It's all about you. It's all about me. That's right. <laughs> so uh welcome to 2024 we'll into, outturn members. Yeah. Won't go into all the, about the finding a bottle with Kelly's birthday. birthday. Uh, won't go into the full reveal on this one, but a few people have said this was on day 24 in the uh, the Kensington Wine Market uh, 2023 whiskey calendar. Uh, right. Best whiskey in the calendar, uh, in Chris's opinion. Um, it's totally up there. It's it's fantastic stuff. Like it's got these great dried fruit notes, some nuttiness to it as well. A mm -hmm. um, little bit leathery. It's it's pretty much got everything you want out of a, a good sherry whiskey. Yeah, that's good. And, and none of the things you don't necessarily want. No sulfur. No, it's not oh, very, nope. it's not particularly tannic. No. It's just uh, beautiful. Mm. It's yeah. leather, viscous. Yeah. So, sorry, this is a, is this Oloroso? Yeah, yeah. finished in Oloroso. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that one a lot. The year of Sherry. It is the year of Sherry, 2024. <laughs> you can add a bit of water to this one. Mm -hmm. Didn't do it when I did my tasting note up on it originally. A little bit of celery salt coming through with water. Mm 
almost like you're nosing a, a, a Caesar glass. Chris, uh, Will Christie says lots of hot chocolate powder makes an oval teen. I can see that. What if, sorry, I've never had mm -hmm. oval teen. What is this? I've seen it referenced before. Yeah, so it's it's essentially similar to hot chocolate, except they're using, I think it's made from malt, like from malted barley, essentially, that's crushed down. That's a malted, it's a malted, I want to say chocolate drink, but not necessarily chocolate. Yeah. It's a malted yeah. drink um, mm. that you have usually well, it says with. says it's a, a poor man's hot chocolate mix. Yeah, that you have with hot water. <laughs> Some people will have it at bedtime to help them sleep, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that's what this is for. Exactly. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is condensed rich Ovaltine, man's hot chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that but that Ovaltine is a good call. That's I mean, does it is yeah. it even still made for starters? I mean, mm -hmm. I've not mm -hmm. ever go shop, I don't ever go shopping for it, but is does it even still exist? But that's a really good reference. Because there's I a have a, a chocolate Ovaltine at home, actually. Oh, there you go. They do still make it. Oh. Okay. Mm. Yeah, this is <laughs> With water, it, it still takes it really, really well again. Like, does not fall apart. I'm I'm super impressed. It's a little bit spicier, a little bit more savory on the palate, but killer stuff. Yeah, the savoriness kicks up. Okay, last but not least for our first run through, we are finishing with Down With Subtlety. Uh, Ex-Bourbon Hogshead for the starting cask. Uh, first fill heavy char number four plus hogshead so going probably into an alligator char type char there uh 279 bottles to me i'll turn 63.6 percent .6 alcohol which is pretty impressive for a cast finish love the nose on this mm. yeah it's it's like barbecue and chocolate and chalk again Lots of minerality to it on the nose too. Yes, absolutely. I get that right off the bat. Flintiness, minerality. Oh, palette is oh, beautiful. I love some of the descriptors in here. Mad and brilliant. A boisterous mm -hmm. and potent dram. Palettes are taking there. breath. Yeah. So Ash there have been some uh, some really good names from this distillery from the society recently too. From what I okay. recall, it's just so like chemically driven. It's yep. like um, yep, chemical painted on bark, uh, and then you light it on fire. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, and just liquid smoke uh, as well. Yeah. A little bit of Worcestershire. Mm -hmm. Worcester, I guess. Worcestershire. A little experiment to cast in there. That's right. A little bit of leather saddle. Some, yeah, some saddle next really to Really nice dark it? chocolate notes. Yeah. It's like a salty chocolate. Mm -hmm. Chocolate bark. But, I, but there's harmony. Your comment about chemically, like it's not well, pure. No, no, it's not yeah. sort of pure campfire smoke or traditional no. peat. There is that chemical yeah. side of it, like you were walking past a, I don't know, a, a paint plant uh, that was on fire or something. Like there's absolutely yeah, yeah. A, a chemically yeah. fiery note to this, not yeah. in a bad way, just a different, yeah. a different smoky kind of way. Yeah, absolutely. It's like. It and it's not quite rubber. It's not quite tar. Um, yeah, it's like an industrial yeah. building was on fire or something. And yeah, it's burning smelling... plastic maybe. Like That's maybe. Right. It's, it's, I like that. It's it's not quite rubber. It's not quite tar, but you know it's bad for you. And <laughs> is what it comes down to. Yeah, like you shouldn't be inhaling it as a drink. Though it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't breathe it in. Just drink it. That's right. Yeah. And then so, I. I I'm still getting like I don't know what I'm hung up on today, but like Tootsie Rolls. Oh, that's a good call. Is in there for me. So Chris Walker says seaside smoke and dried fish. 
Uh, Graham Tyler says hardwood. I think that's a really good one. Almost like a little bit of railroad tie in there. Mm. Mm. Uh, well, Christy says if it wasn't for the burn and punch at the end, it would almost be between lightly and regularly peated instead of the heavily peated that is classified as. Not as vegetal as some peated drums. I agree. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you took a bag of potpourri and set it on fire. <laughs> That's great. Mm -hmm. Again, takes a while to water, in my opinion. Oh, I bet. Well, that's a lot of different flavors for seven different drowns there. It's going to be fun to go through again because first time through, that seems like seven very, very different drowns too, which is pretty cool. It's, um, this last one kind of reminds me of like my dad. Yeah, he was a mechanic and he used to bring vehicles home and change mm -hmm. oil and do God knows what and be covered in oil. And yeah. I would just be there like trying to organize his toolbox, but having no idea what anything was. And then he'd mm -hmm. get mad the next day and have to spend a full day reorganizing the toolbox. But I would do it by like shapes and colors. Yeah, yeah you're doing <laughs> that wrong. There were measurements on all yeah. these things. I had no idea. But... You had to go back in afterwards and yell them and be like, did you touch my toolbox? Yeah, yeah, exactly. How dare you, dad? <laughs> Yeah, but that's that, a really cool comparison, and it's it comes back to that mechanical, chemical sort of note that we're getting off of it. Mechanicals, maybe even a better a better word like greasy bike chains that are smoldering or something. There's a real mechanical note to this. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very nice. Well, are you guys ready to go back to the beginning and see how they're holding up? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do it. That nose is incredibly fruity after that last one. Was it ever? Yeah, yeah, to go so to first cotton day. candy. Oh my god! Oh, is it ever? That's it's it's uh, like cashew butter, like it, instead of peanut butter. Like it, it's got this sweet fattiness to it right now on the nose. I'm getting those blue whale candies. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's it's like something beyond, like it, it's a bear claw that you get at uh, in Banff or whatever, uh, like those those chocolate with the pretzels and the caramel and the nuts in them, but almost beyond that uh, for decadence. A fruit punch snow cone, like just the concentrated <laughs> red fruit syrup that you know goes into yeah. everything. Gatorade and snow cones and mm -hmm. it reminds me of like Pez candies without the chalkiness. Yeah. But this is without the carcinogens of the red. <laughs> of the red fruit, the, the, red, the red, red food red coloring. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's not peated. That's why. <laughs> so all the calories that we're saving in the next one, diet peat, are in this one. It is so sweet. That's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Chris Walker says Swedish berry icing. I can oh, see that. That was a thing. That Swedish awesome. berries. Yeah. Yum. Mm -hmm. it, it's got this like concentrated zing to it fruit wise where it, it doesn't stick around, but it's like there and gone. But it reminds me of a uh, Jolly Rancher, like uh, where it's just like you take a lick of a Jolly Rancher and it's like so concentrated at once and then boof, like unless, unless it's in your mouth, it's like a lollipop almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hmm. but for me, it's a, it's that acidity of pineapple that just sticks around. Hmm. So uh, for the reveal on this one, this is one where I'm uh, really looking forward to doing this live tomorrow because uh, I think this is going to be a shocker for some people. So this is eight years old. Uh, from the Highlands, uh, distilled on 10th of June, 2014, and it is a grain. This is Scotch Malt Whiskey Society G15.30. Well, but is it though? 
Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Kelly, uh, if I remember correctly, G15, that would be uh, Loch Lomond grain and likely 100% malted barley through a column still? Correct. Ross Dew. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Ross Dew or, or often bottled as old Ross Dew or Ross Dew, uh, if you find older bottlings from it, uh, which you still can from the early 90s, which is pretty cool from independent bottlers. Um, from Loch Lomond Distillery, which uh, is a very fanciful distillery that does a lot of different styles. Um, and we've had some great stuff from them uh, on the on the Raj Du side of things over the last couple of years, too, which is really neat. Uh, young, but well put together and just delicious stylistically, which is really fun. Yeah, this is awesome. This is exactly why I tell people to not discount grain whiskeys. Yep. Or young and young grain whiskeys. I mean, there's lots of yep. beautiful older grain whiskeys out there. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a young, but it, you know, as Kelly says, she, you know, it's, it's, it's not really, it's not, it, it's by definition, but not, yeah. but it's not, not by ingredient. It's not a wheat whiskey. It is still no. malted barley, yep. just a different st distilling approach. Mm hmm. But people will see that on the label and as make assumptions, right? Yep. And it's, mm -hmm. um, and then when you said eight years old, Evan, I just got so happy because I've been enjoying so many new young uh, whiskeys over the last few years. And I just, mm -hmm. uh, I know you and I have talked about how we could fill up, you know, three or four tastings on whiskeys that are of great quality between five and 10 years. Yep. It wouldn't be hard to do. No, it's kind of the uh, the point that's kind of lost by by people. I know I'm guilty of it, and I know a lot of other people are uh, at work and and elsewhere. Whiskey, whiskey fan wise, where uh, we we tend to romance and and romanticize the older whiskeys, and they tend to be fantastic. But um, the great thing about nowadays, where there there's a lot of production and a lot of young production that's coming out because people. Are trying to turn over stock and, and get their money back uh distillery wise um you guys don't know anything about that do you robin kelly no no, no what you're talking about okay that's that's other distillery's problems i guess uh but uh but it it you get these fantastic bottles that are just like lively and fun and uh show more mature than their years uh, in uh, in most cases or in a lot of cases, which is really, really cool. It's easy to discount something just because it's younger than 10, but uh, you miss out on a lot of cool bottles. Absolutely. And uh, I think in the last year or two, the uh, society has been showing the world like, yeah. how good young whiskey can be. Yep. And I've really enjoyed being a part of that. And just, mm -hmm. it's I've, I've never been anyone caught in the stigma of an age statement, which I'm, I'm grateful for because I know that people who are, um, there is a profile that comes along with that. And it's hard once you love it to appreciate things that aren't like that style. Um, yep. I'm grateful that I haven't been stuck in that world where I can't go back and enjoy something young um, mm -hmm. and not, and just not be affected by what the number is. I don't care what the number on the bottle is. I just wanted to try something good. Uh, yeah. And then to go, wow, that that's cool. That's great. Hmm, call them still, hey? Hmm. And just yep, be happy exactly. with it. Exactly. It's yeah. what it's what it tastes like, not the age. I, I remember a, a few years ago, well, pre-COVID, we were out Victoria Whiskey Festival and doing the consumer tasting, and a woman walked up and absolutely insisted that she she would not try anything under 15 years old. Nope. Come on, you know, just try, just try. No, mm -hmm. I will not try anything under 15 years old. I just, I almost told her, go away. And wrong table. Not, you're at the wrong table. Yeah. Not, not interested. What like, you should have said is, uh, I'll see you in five years when you can't afford those 15 year olds. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's just such a silly comment. Yeah. 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 The other great thing about a, uh, a bottle like this is, uh, yeah, it's young, but it's also 132 bucks, which ain't bad at all. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Okay, yeah. on to whiskey number two. Oh, before you go on, um, yeah, I just want to mention on this one, 
the first whiskey is the Giving Spirit bottle. So it's the right beginning of the year, first quarter of the year, and time to launch a new Giving Spirit bottle. So this is it. And the proceeds of this are going to UNICEF Canada which uh, I had some connection with UNICEF Canada years ago and really great organization. So cool. just so people know, if you buy a bottle, you're supporting a good cause. 100% of our um, profits go to charity on this one. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, that's a good cause. Yeah. Okay, I, number uh, two. used to only trick or treat so I could carry my UNICEF box around and try to get nice. as much yep. money as I could. I hated dressing up as a kid, but I liked collecting the money in my UNICEF box. Nice. Good for That's you. great. Yeah. <laughs> number two's got that, that sort of like bear claw thing going on right now for me. Very nutty right now again. I added water earlier and it has this great oiliness to it, like even on the nose cool. now. Still can't believe this is Peter just based on the nose. Mm. Yeah. But with time, I think it seems more peated on the palate than it did the first yeah. time. Yeah, I yes. think you're right. It's, it's the more there. Thought. Yeah, it's more there now than it was previously. It's still really light, but it's there. I wonder mm. if that's because the previous one had gone so sweet. <laughs> you can find peat on anything. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah it's got this nice sort of like waxy grain and fruit note on the on the palate right now too. This might be the best lineup of the year so yeah. So, so far? far. Yep, so far. Yeah. <laughs> I think we can say that confidently. Best lineup of the year. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Well, we better check with Chris. This might be either this might be his eighth favorite of the of the lineup. I'm not sure. <laughs> Is he still lying on the floor of his shed though? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Shid. His shid. His shid. <laughs> In the New Zealand accent. Yeah. Out in his shid. Well, Chris, he says he found more of the bottle caps candy after coming back to Diet Pete. Mm. Nice. <laughs> okay, so for the reveal, uh, for Diet Pete, this is eight years old. From the 20th of May, 2014. What was it for the first one? 10th of June, 2014? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh, another green. And this is Scotch Malt Whiskey Society G15.34, which makes it a Rajdu. Mm -hmm. right. So same right. distillery, uh, distilled within 20 days of each other, essentially 20, 21 days of each other, I guess, on the same year in two different styles. But both ex bourbon well, barrels. Yep. And one's got a bit of peat to it. It's funny because over the years we've done this a handful of times where we've had two bottlings from the same distillery in the same outturn. And yep. I would really only do that if they were different enough that they could maybe bookend the lineup. Mm -hmm. So you've got a non-peated at the start, a peated one at the end. So then I saw these two on our allocation and they arrived into the warehouse. And I thought, oh, I, I want to get them in the same outturn and lightly peated. Maybe just maybe it could sit at the end of the outturn. And then as we built the outturn and stuff landed in, in the lineup where it did. And with, with the have with the heavily peated one at the end, we thought, okay, it's not going to be at the end, but maybe it'll yep. be second to the end. And then you went and put it second number two, second, <laughs> right next to the first one. I thought, yeah, oh, that, that was a bit better. of a conversation. Yeah. That's completely ideal because now they're not book entered, but they're side by each. And mm -hmm. they're different. The, they are very different and yet not vastly different. You know, it's not like we've got no. a, a juicy oak and vanilla no. and a heavily peated. We've got no. a juicy oak and vanilla and one that's so barely peated that it's just a stretch, but they're different enough yep. from they're, they're different. the same distillery that that's, that's the kind of stuff I love about this concept of, you know, single cask releases and 
um, mm -hmm. not putting distillery names on anything because you don't want any biases and preconceptions. So this is a great little example of that. Yeah. 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 yeah well, Christy still thinks so. I think Coastal might have been a better one for that one. <laughs> Could have been. Yeah. I can see it. It's it's not like heavily coastal, but there is a little bit of that to it. It's and keeping in mind too that we have no way of knowing what else the tasting panel was sampling that day, yeah. where it fell into whatever else was in front of them, what their palates had going on. So, you know, whether they always get it right and who's defining right, you know, and, indetermined. It's and yeah, these mm -hmm. may not have come to the tasting panel in the same session. Well, no, like I'm we're sure, tasting, I'm, I'm sure, sure they did. So it's it's just rare that we got them at yeah. the same time, and they ended up beside each other. Yeah, but to put this one in in lightly peated yeah. for yeah, all of us tonight up. seems like a a real stretch. But yeah, yeah. when I know when I know them now, they they smell so similar. If you I agree. Now. Actually, I I totally agree with you. Uh, that the the mm -hmm. peanutty note uh, and and peanut butter note for me comes off tremendously on both. I get mm -hmm. bananas on both. Mm -hmm. That's very shopping, similar, actually. I noticed that too, Cam. Earlier, I went back and nosed them both and thought, "Oh, these are really similar now." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the price is pretty close to the same too. This one, uh, and it's crazy because this one is peated in quotes. Uh, where it, it's it definitely has a bit to it. It's not heavy, heavy, but it's actually a little less expensive than the uh, uh, the first round by two bucks, if I remember correctly. Well, that's that's. I mean, just to give you some insight into Alberta government uh, liquor markup, they have an extra markup on anything over sixty percent. Right. Um, and so one of them is just under, and one of them is just over, and so that's yeah, probably so this the is, difference. Because otherwise, yeah. they pretty much would be in BC. In BC, their price the same. Pr price the same. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that makes sense because the uh, <laughs> the diet peat is as just under as you can get at fifty nine point nine percent alcohol. Yeah. And then sixty two point one for the other one. Those are those are so fun to side by side. I. I uh, I didn't try and push it that way when I was putting the lineup together, but I'm I'm really happy with it, how they work together uh, at the end of it. So that's that's really really neat. Is this the lineup Sammy helped you with? Uh, yeah, usually I, I rope in a few people to to check it out if they're around, just to make sure I'm not crazy. Uh, but uh, I, I believe Sammy did help me with this one. Thank you, Sammy. Uh, on to number three. Uh, dark and stormy creme brulee. This is a fun one to go to after the first two because even with the vibrance and freshness of the first one, this is just like neither one or two had like a ton of fruit going on, and this all all of a sudden there's a ton of fruit for it, which is really cool. Disagree. I would just say the fruit is different. I thought the the first one's had a fruit, more citrus fruits and tropical fruits, where this one's more denser, heavier, more concentrated fruit profile. Absolutely, uh, John. Uh, you're asking for a link for Diet Pete. It is right there for you. I get my mom's chocolate fudge at Christmas time. Do you? Mm -hmm. yeah. She must still like you. <laughs> yeah, that uh, like sarsaparilla kind of note mm -hmm. in there is is very dominant for me. Um, prunes and prunes. ginger, or almost like I think someone said nougat earlier. Yeah. Um, like a, for me, it's like fig Newton kind of style. Big Newton is a really good call because it, it's got that sort of like almost into graham cracker, but like the 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 cakey crumble around it. Yeah, but not as sweet as a graham cracker. Yeah, I find it interesting they're referring to this as dark and stormy, but there's no reference in the tasting note. Uh, Harmony, you've just said it to ginger. Mm -hmm. Which, and a dark and stormy is made with ginger beer, dark, isn't it? Yeah, a dark and stormy is yeah. made with ginger beer. Hmm. Um, so oh, I was gonna say, what's the ABV? Maybe they were drinking. It's only <laughs> fifty. That's moderate. So mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but they're not wrong for me. Like it's it. Well, there, it's there's funny. there's this there's this coconut and vanilla note that goes along with that too, or where I I could almost see uh, like a rum and and, and ginger note to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Will Christie thinks the the nose on the dark and stormy is better than the flavor. That's fair. It is a really really good nose. Yeah, I maybe so would have liked to have seen it at higher than fifty percent. Yeah, I mean that I was intentional. It works that. That's that's not cast strength. They brought it down to fifty percent, and you'll yeah. see why in a, in a second. But I would have liked to have seen it higher. I think. I, mm -hmm. I was shocked by that too at first uh, when I tried it. I went to check and I was like, oh, it's the lowest in our lineup so far. That's that's yep. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think the the thing that puts it at number three is that it's it's definitely sweeter uh versus the first two for me. Um so for the reveal, uh Dark and Stormy is six years old. So younger than the first two from the 29th of April, 2016. In the spicy and dry category, there's 1,300 bottles from your turn because of what this is. So here is the link for everybody and I'll share my screen. But uh, this is the third grain out of three glasses that we've had in the lineup so far. Which this might I, I don't know. I haven't uh, done all 13 years of outturns, but uh, the, I wouldn't be surprised if this is the first time that there, there's been three grains to start uh, an SMWS lineup in Canada. Probably. Yeah, I would think so. That's a pretty cool label. Yeah, I like the label. Yeah. Yeah, I like the colors. Another really nicely priced bottle at uh, 138. And this one was put together for Lowland Spirit 2023, which is, uh, is it just Whiskey Festival or is it just a Spirits Festival in the Lowlands? Lowlands? Do you guys know? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. And I think it's a, you know, relatively new, obviously with Ireland Space Ed Festivals being the two big, most well-known ones and known ones. And now all the other regions are doing their own thing. So mm -hmm. Lowland, I typed in Lowland Whiskey Festival just sort of for clarity purposes, but is it broader than that? Perhaps I would need to look into that. Well, there's there are uh, it, it's probably the distillery or the the region Scotland wise that's boomed the most when you see like not just on the number of distilleries increase, but the the amount of distilleries that are here there now versus ten years ago. Um, yeah. Uh, or even 15 years ago, because yeah, there's a there's a ton that we aren't even aware of, or we haven't even seen yet in the Lowlands. But uh, we have seen Holy Rood now, which I believe you guys would be a Lowlands, correct? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Daft Mill, of course. Borders. They say doesn't Glasgow. Fit, but, uh, well, and this Kings one, this Barnes. Is yeah. This is Glasgow Distillery. This one. Yeah. Yeah, and Glasgow does tend to have this this super concentrated style to it, which even at fifty percent, this has a really good concentration of flavor, which is cool. Yeah, and do we need to talk about a little bit about exactly what this is? Because it's not yeah single malt. It's not a single malt. Mm -hmm. um, so what in the it? in the uh, PDF that you would have sent out in the link. To people have and whether mm -hmm. or not people read this page so it's distillery g16 so g because it is a grain unlike the first two where it was 100 percent malted barley that's just been distilled through a column still instead of a pot still this is actually a grain in the sense that it's more than just barley so this has a mash bill of 58 percent corn 21 percent malted barley and 24 21 percent unmalted rye it was distilled in a pot still, which is unusual for a grain whiskey, and then matured in heavily charred 24 month air seasoned new oak barrels from Kelvin Cooperage in the US with toasted heads added to create even more flavor. We bottled this at six years old and at 50% ABV as a nod to the bottled in bond strength you find in the US. 
So this was when the SMWS approached Glasgow Distillery back in April 2016 to create a custom mash bill for the society. So this is the result Whoa. of that. Um, and if you bourbon folk want to talk about bottled and bond, uh, yeah. be my guest. But this is this is about as a one off as it gets when it comes to mm -hmm. creating things for the society. Yeah, that's that's kind of kind of cool, and I hadn't read that part part yet, but it is kind of a cool homage to the whole bottled and bond style, especially considering if this was uh, uh, distilled and matured in the U.S., this would be considered a bourbon, um, based on the mash bill. Yeah. So bottled and bond, uh, of course, is a U.S. term. It's been around since 1897, which it was actually uh, a legislated term, uh, and and there's a whole lot of rules that go along or laws that, that uh, go along with it for how it's made, um, both how it's distilled and how it's put into cask and then uh, how it's aged, where it has to be put in a bonded warehouse, which means that, uh, um, and and this there would, would have been something like this, uh, there definitely was something like this in the US where uh, government officials had to be able to go in and, and check everything. Um, I know that happened in Scotland because Glen Farkless Distillery has uh, the little, cage where the excise man would come in and and do all the accounting on it i guess but uh uh that that kind of hearkening back to the bottled and bond term and and doing almost a bourbon -esque style is is pretty cool i never picked up on that yeah it's very cool mm -hmm. yeah so um even though it's from glasgow distillery which is distillery number 156 in the society portfolio this is considered a G16 because again, it's a grain. They had to put it under the G headings. And so this is G16, the newest bottling code for grain whiskeys. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Finally, Scots can get a hold of some bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you're getting rye from Inch Dairney. I mean, it's a brave new world. That's right. This, uh, to be fair, this is a little bit cheaper than the rye. So. <laughs> yeah. okay on to number five fit for or sorry number four fit for a king the nose is just beautiful now now i get why the king likes it yeah there we go that was so close for me before but yeah it almost felt a little disjointed like not complete i should say not disjointed but just not complete that there, there's like the a waxiness to the nose, but it's again, to, to sort of put it on the spice side of things, it's it's like the waxiness of a, of a pepper uh, on the nose, like almost going into bell pepper notes. I just realized you said pepper. I heard pamper, like the diapers. I'm like, oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, pepper. Yeah. Speaking of which, and uh, my kids are are well out of diapers at this point, and hopefully I'm the next one to wear one in the family uh, at this point. Hopefully. Um, uh, but uh, my uh, my youngest, we still have some that somehow hang around uh, from hand me downs and stuff for pull ups, and uh, he cut open a pull up the other day, and don't let your children do that. It is an effing mess. Uh, uh, word to the wise or word from the wise, I guess, uh, on that one. So, fit for a king, I'm not usually a huge spicy whiskey fan, but that one just works so so well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. I mean, you definitely would not want to be smoking a cigar with this because it will just intensify that heat. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think would go Probably. really great with food. I was gonna say maybe not with Indian food, but uh maybe not. A yeah. sweet food. That's right. That's very interesting. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
again, I wish I knew more about the name. <laughs> like, yeah. if some things like connect, it's like your my granny's old shed. Yeah, I get it. Like that, I get. Worm tubs, I get. You mm -hmm. know. Yeah, I think sometimes they just struggle to come up with a name, so they <laughs> throw yeah. some little. <laughs> they do in. a couple of Mad Libs and uh, see yeah. what sticks. I was yeah. gonna say that well, just that's it's... just what separates the kings from the peasants. It's like we just don't get it. It's okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's funny if you look at. If you look at the Tasty Notes Harmony, they talk about how if you add artisan cheese and oat cakes, it's fit for a king. So your your take uh, on this would go good with food? It's right in the Tasty Notes. There you go. So There you go. Thanks, Cam. <laughs> so uh, for the reveal, Fit for a King is the oldest bottle we've had tonight at 12 years old. And it's from a distillery that we see the occasional SMWS bottle from and the, the, the very, very occasional so bottles from other independent bottlers, but it's not a distillery that really sticks in my mind personally, because you just don't see a ton of bottlings or independent bottlings from it. Um, this is from a distillery called Othrusk, uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society 95.86. Uh, I spent years uh, calling it Okroisk, and I still call it Okroisk from time to time, just because that's how it looks. <laughs> but uh, most Othrusk, uh, distillery-wise, it's it's essentially there to provide whiskey for Johnny Walker, uh, and maybe a bit of J&B. I think mostly it goes into Johnny Walker, though. It tends to be very sort of spirity. This is the spiciest one that I can remember. Uh, having but uh, this is also my the the best one I can remember having too um, this is just it, it's more expressive and characterful than anything else that I can recall from Othrusk which is really neat we have had other society bottles from these guys uh, and uh, Will Christie did mention another one of them uh, which was bodybuilders and ball gowns uh, which we had for quite a while. It wasn't one that that uh, flew off the shelves, if I recall correctly. And I think that's, I think Kelly, you reminded me of that one as well. Yeah, this is also, so this this one is a sister cask to that one, Bodybuilders. And this is also a sister cask to 9532 Blondie Bombshell from mm -hmm. June, 2020. And that one did go relatively fast, if I remember yeah. correctly. Mm -hmm. Well, now that you say that, there's definitely some signature notes in here that are reminiscent of that distillery. But the spiciness is to a whole new level I didn't expect. Yeah, same here. Uh, I, I really liked how the spiciness went and on this one. And again, I, I just, I'm not usually a spice-driven whiskey guy, but this one just works nicely. Um, you're re reading some Mark Twain, eh, Harmony? I am. <laughs> That's cool. I haven't read that yeah. one, but I'm curious about it. Uh, well, I love all the movies that have been made, and and so I was like, I'm going to read the book. And nice. It's so far so good. <laughs> Years ago, I read Roughing It by him, which is essentially about his travels across the West to the, the gold rush in San Francisco, and that one was a lot of fun. Right on. Yeah, I've been really enjoying the classics. I've been doing a lot of it. So Cool. Yeah. Well, there's one for the uh, the book club, I guess, uh, if we ever get that started. Eh? Well, yeah, you know, I'm trying to get that book club going with Marnie, you know. That's right. So, yeah, that's uh, 95.86, 186.99 for that guy. Uh, I did put the, uh, the link in the chat there. On to, well, back to our grandmother's shed. Our grandmother's old shed, pardon me. Yeah. <sighs> It's not a fresh shed. The the smokiness on this one is just super intriguing for me. Oh boy, that's stellar. It's got this this almost like iron shavings, like metallic note on it up front, but then it goes into these great fruit notes. Mm. 
It's really interesting for me. The, the tasting note references red wine spilled on leather. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't know any better that it had some extra maturation in a PX cask, I would have thought it was a red wine cask. Yeah, there's it does just go some in notes that, to that yeah. that are are really red wineish to me, and I typically am not a fan of red wine cask whiskeys at all. Mm -hmm. And this is not; it's a sherry cask. But there's some similarities here that I find really intriguing. I agree. Yeah. In a good way, Kelly. Yep, in a good way. Love it. Yeah, this is really good. Love it. It's beautiful. Yeah, I. I... I can see where you're going with that because red wine casts for me tend to have this almost astringent note to it where they go beyond char. Uh, and it's it's another one of the reasons that I was really wondering what would happen with water because red wine casks, you just, they go more astringent and bitter. And this this one just held onto the water nicely, in my opinion. So this is 14 years old. Uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, 68.101. And I cannot even remember which story that is off the top of my head. Blair Apple. Thank you. Yeah, another one of those, uh, I believe, Diageo distilleries that uh, mostly provides uh, malt for blends. So from the 24th of August, 2007. And we have had numerous 68s over the years, uh, or the last couple of years, if I remember correctly, there's been a couple of times where we've had, I think, multiple 48s and multiple 68s on the shelves. Mm -hmm. But, uh, man, uh, I really like this, what this one did with the PX. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love, I like the chocolate notes too in there. Yeah. I mean, I would... Mm -hmm. Sucker for chocolate. It's shameful, really. But uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I literally told everyone, I'm like, I need you all to check your bags and find me more chocolate. And then before Andrew left, he's like, hey, I found all this chocolate in my office. Like, yes. <laughs> I said, like, nobody gifted me chocolate this Christmas. It's shameful. It's like, I love <sighs> chocolate. So I got stocked up. <laughs> It's, PX it's got casks. this, uh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say PX casks are uh, my favorite sherry casks. I just think they're uh, they're so much better than everything else. Well, the PX casks lean more into like maple syrup notes for me uh, versus mm. a Loroso. And the, it, this has a bit of it. It's, but it also, it, especially after it's sat for a while, goes into, uh, if you've ever had dates, dates wrapped in uh, prosciutto, and baked um and, and then with a balsamic glaze on it it's got that sort of like tangy sweet and meaty note at the same time um no but i think we need that at our next festival like that sounds <laughs> yeah. amazing. they're uh they're pretty fantastic actually yeah i mean that sounds great uh will had said earlier that this is uh showing more maple syrup notes um, mm -hmm. as it's sat, which is, I agree, it's it's quite lovely. That's really nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, number six, will you join the Worm Tub Club? Uh, again, this is the, the bottle that was in our whiskey calendar uh, as a sample. Uh, so glad I was in the January O-turn. I, I did really enjoy this one. It was a fun one to write up tasting notes for as well. So this is going Oloroso cast finish instead of PX cast finish, like the uh, the Blur Apple before it. And same age too. So 14 years old on this guy. Uh, from the 13th of June, 2008. But a different distillery. So mm -hmm. this is cast number 36.209, which makes it Ben Rennes distillery, the 209th cast from Ben Rennes. Oh. And this is a distillery for me that's just, it's got its lovers uh, that that sort of seek it out, but it, it's just kind of on the cusp of, of, of gaining more popularity, in my opinion. Yeah, it's got this like lovely, like 
chocolatey nuttiness to it. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, yeah. Very nutty. And uh, nice spice notes too, just like baking spices. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I love the, just the red fruit and the, the berry notes on this one. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Yeah. So for those of you that, now. yeah, me too. And another Diageo distillery that doesn't necessarily get the love that it could. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, so for those of you that don't get the worm tub ref reference, um, there are certain distilleries that still use worm tubs in Scotland. Uh, ben Rennes being one of them. Uh, worm tubs tend to add this sort of uh, meaty weight and, and quality, especially a youth, uh, to the whiskeys that are distilled through it. Um, there are a couple of very popular distilleries that use worm tubs that tend to get a lot of love, including Mortlock. Uh, Craig Yellicky has been getting more and more love over time. Ben Rennes is another worm tub distillery. Um, and there are about four or five others that just aren't coming to me right now, but uh, they are not the only ones, but they're, it's definitely something that's not used at all distilleries in Scotland. Mm -hmm. I think Ardenaho Distillery in, in, on Isla actually ha uses warm tubs, if I remember correctly, too. Does Linkwood? Ooh, good question. They I think like, they might. If they might. Yeah. We wanted to at Holyrood, but space wasn't an option for us because yeah, these are tough, yeah. these are big contraptions that sit on the outside of a distillery. They're they're literally huge round tubs that hold water and copper coils, uh, yep. and they take up a lot of space. But they add a really great element to new make spirit. And when we were designing Holyrood, we would have loved to have had worm tubs, but there just wasn't the space to put, put them on, on the, the outside, nor could we necessarily have gotten planning permission to do that because our building is a listed building, which means you're only allowed to make certain modifications to the exterior of it. So um, we weren't able to do it, but you know, if we had been given carte blanche from the ground up to build whatever we wanted, we definitely would have done worm tubs. I was going to say, could put it on the roof, roof right next to the AC unit, eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <and> solar panels. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. Uh, Ardenaho is one. Ben Rennes, Brora, Craig and Moore, Del, uh, Del Winnie, uh are other yeah. warm tub distilleries. But yeah. I forgot about Del. Edward Dower, actually, Edward Dower has. Edward well. Dower does as well. And I think Which is hilarious. For one of the news distilleries, yeah. I think Bell and yes. Delic does too. Oh, yeah. They mm -hmm. do, yeah. but I did not know how to say it, and so I skipped <laughs> over it. <laughs> that's that's another one I mispronounce. I I usually call it Belinda Lock for some reason. Uh, I love it. What it looks Belinda. like. Yeah. Belinda's lock. I was a huge, uh, I was a huge fan of Belinda Locke in the MTV era. Uh, she was a fantastic singer. Yeah, Belinda Locke and Poppin. That's right. That's right. Tons of hits on the top forty. Oh my god, funny. No, that's quite lovely. It uh, definitely opened up quite a bit, and. Uh, seems more I, they, I think rob you mentioned that it was just like um shoot i don't remember what you said but it was like this in your face like whiskey like ready to go i don't even remember i've been drinking I don't remember. Remember. <laughs> when he speaks one of us should be listening i guess yeah well yeah. that'd be first <laughs> yeah. so whiskey calendar wise this was in our whiskey calendar was day 24 it's it's the first time in a long time in our regular calendar where the smws bottle wasn't on the the last day uh on the uber whiskey calendar that only we only made 45 of or so um there was an smws bottle holding on the last day and it was like a more amped up version of this uh for mortlock that was 30 years old and wow. it was just massive and and just like everything you would expect from a sherry worm tub whiskey in a really cool manner too hmm. that yeah. will be coming that's a so that was a big teaser that's one of our vaults collection releases of which we've had a few over the last couple of years 
which mm-hmm. just means it's really old. It's in special packaging and we can charge more for it. Um, but that will be coming probably in mid February. Cool. Very few of them because it will be expensive, but yeah. Oh, that's it's yeah. It, it'll be pricey, but it's a, uh, it's a wicked bottle. If you're a, a fan of worm tubs, I guess. Um, number seven. Down with subtlety. It's like a sweet peat at this mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not so chemically this, anymore. Yeah. Yeah. This this distillery, I think, is um almost idiosyncratic in in their peated releases. Like they just don't show like anything else I can think of distillery wise. I was gonna say my initial initial nose on it. Uh, this go around was like walking into a barn at the stampede. Mm, yeah. Really? That that manure smell. It, yeah. I'm not getting that. Mm. Well, this goes into <laughs> it, like it's not a it's not a coastal peat. It's more like the the burning leaves in the fall peat for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where it's this that palette from, smoke. Yeah. That palette for me is way better second time around. I think it just needed a little bit of air. I agree. There's a lot more fruit coming through for sure. Uh huh. Like honeydew melon and cantaloupe for me right now. Yep. Apples, maybe a bit of pineapple even. Strangely, that's more subtle now. Yeah, it's not the hit in the face it was the first no. time, but it's 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 a little <laughs> more cohesive now, and it's that's really mm-hmm. really good. I like that. Uh, with time, it becomes more subtlety. Exactly. <laughs> no, it's that's very nice. Still a big yeah. dram. It's yeah, very it big. Is. It's not as drying though now that the fruit is coming through for me, where it was yeah. very much like a, a, I think Harmony had said like a a rub that you put on on meat or something like that, where it's it's like it was that almost sugar. just smoky and nothing else. Yeah how the sweetness is coming through. Mm. So this is nine years old from the Highlands. It is Scotch Malt Whiskey Society 16.87, which makes it a, a peated Glen Turret. And uh, this is a, a name that I, I will probably continue to butcher, even though I'm... Uh, told uh, a few times what it's supposed to be pronounced as but i, I call it rue more just because I, I don't know what else to say about it so i was told ruid to rhyme with druid cool and then, and then more so ruid more ruid more yeah so this is another peter glen turret uh last one we had uh was oh uh, red, red sky red at night. Sky at night Barnes Barnes Light. Light. Yeah, Love which is a that great one. name. Yeah, yeah. We th- we still have some of that bottle left too, and that was a fantastic one as well. I think a little bit spicier than this one, from what I recall. Yeah, yeah. And the there was what was the one before that? Because there's been a couple of really really good names. There's been a few uh, rude more yeah. lately. We have our own. Uh, uh, Kensington Wine Market has our, we have a, a cask of Rue Moore from, uh, our Rue Moore from Berry Brothers and Rudd. That's quite good as well. Mm-hmm. A little bit spicier than this one. Again, a little bit more on those savory notes. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one is really cool. So nine years old, 167.99. Uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, number 16.87. Will says, I thought the DH was is usually silent, uh, but I don't know. I also don't speak Scots Gaelic. Uh, I don't think anybody here does. Uh, so <laughs> so you're you're safe on that one. You can you can call it room more just like I do if you want. Uh, we'll we'll start a club. Either way, you couldn't rude more of the name <laughs> if you tried. Nice one. Thanks. That's that's uh that's a Scots Gaelic dad joke for you there. Uh, for <laughs> Yeah. Well, that was that was one heck of a lineup. Uh, yeah. A really good way to ring in the new year, in my opinion. Um, yeah, fantastic. I I I really liked how 
uh, everything showed very differently uh, for it. I think there is a, a bit more of a through note for the first two, which there should be on after the second time we went through, but so many different changes in flavor for the rest of the lineup, which is really, really cool. Yeah, and we tried to put together uh, a fairly uh, affordable lineup in the first yeah. month after Christmas. There's nothing with a, a lot of age on it. Everything's really reasonably priced. So we thought we'd try to just cut everybody a break <laughs> after the Christmas <laughs> rush. Uh, and then hit you up in February. But uh, yeah, and I mean, and if the prices are still not to your liking, we do have a little experimental bottle from the <laughs> society right. that you can purchase that's very affordable uh, in comparison to some of them. Um, the experimental spirit drink, very tempting. It's much yeah. smaller volume, though. Much True. smaller, but could pack a big punch. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, keen to try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to trying that too. Gotta see if it, it, it can't be spicier than the authorized. There's no way. <laughs> 110 <laughs> Scotch bonnet chilies thrown in the cask. I don't know. I'm willing That's to bet right. it might be. It might be. Um, I think mean, thought there were Tabasco chilies in that cask, weren't they? No, that was their previous uh, experiment some many years ago. The where they, where one, they, I think would be awesome. I think that would be just like what they they tried that a number of years ago. They aged a whiskey in a cask that held Tabasco sauce and they bottled it under the name hot scotch and sold it as a seasoning drink, like to, to cook with. <laughs> yeah. Um and you know it was, what? I, I could actually see chucking that into like a spicy Caesar rather than putting vodka or Right, something like that. I think that would work wonderfully. Okay, oh, and by the way, Kelly and Rob and and perhaps Evan and Cam, I get it. Hi, um, and but remind me. I I do appreciate um the uh, price ranges in 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 this month. The Warm Tub Club one is still that was my whiskey of the calendar mm -hmm. for the KWM calendar and it's my whiskey of the taste I just like I just bought one um no it was really really good but for some reason in in harmony might know because I may or may not have sent her a message earlier I'm referring to this as a stormy Daniels granny tasting <laughs> <laughs> so. we'll take it Wow. I have the mentality of a 13 year old. Okay. We <laughs> yeah. know. Well, Chris, uh, you're only four years behind the times uh, when it comes to, to, to grabbing the headlines. So that's good. <laughs> you know, but no, awesome, awesome turnout tonight. Lower out turn, turnout, out turn. Good turnout, too. Um, but yeah. no, it was an awesome, it was lovely tonight. There's not a bad one in the bunch. Really, there isn't. Yeah, good. Good. Well, I'm yeah. glad we could share them with you. And That's what we go for. Kicking those set of high bar, so shit. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> 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 what do we do next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was everything. They, they didn't leave uh, anything behind for February. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, thank um, you all uh, for joining us. Uh, Evan, thank how you, Rob are and Kelly. MS ticket sales going? Uh, pretty good. Uh, but thank you for that. Uh, we are looking to, uh, there are still tickets available. I'll grab that right now, the link for that. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, Kensington Wine Market hosts a, or, or helps put together a, a massive whiskey festival, our, the largest whiskey festival that we're in, uh, that, that we're part of, uh, every year, which is the MS Whiskey Festival in January. Um, there are tickets available for that still. Uh, it's going to be at the Telus Spark this year, which is a pretty cool venue. We haven't done it there before. Before Previously, it's been at the Arts Commons. Uh, that's not available anymore, at least at the moment. So we're doing the Telus Spark this year. But uh, Massive Whiskey Festival, There's we're looking at about 55 tables currently uh with a bunch of different whiskey a lot of people that uh from scotland and brand ambassadors uh from eastern canada that make the trip here and then go on to the victoria whiskey festival uh in victoria 
uh, that will be at that one. Uh, five different master classes as well uh, to look forward to, but uh, some really, really cool stuff that'll be available there and uh, at a really fun venue as well. And all the proceeds go to the MS Society, which is really, really nice as well. Yeah. So, Rob and Kelly, are you guys going to be, are you guys at the festival, the MS Festival? I, so Why did you remind I me? I know. I, ironically, <laughs> not. I mean, we've, Everyone been, there, but every, Chris, we've been there yes. every other year. Yeah. We're huge supporters of it. And then this year, uh, it's just timing. We're actually going to be in Victoria doing a Holy Root event. So uh, we're mm -hmm. not going to be there this year. The KWM tables, like Evan and your team will have probably three, yeah. two or three tables of KWM stuff. So there may be some society bottles on it, but we won't be there with our own table this year for the first time oh. ever. So we'll remedy that I mean, next year. You but... know, if you want to just... It, it so a sounds KWM like... Uh... I'm more than happy to just stand there and, and share you <laughs> with people. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly and Rob, it sounds like you need me to come back to Calgary to help you out with the table. I'm thinking. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you and I, I think we just became dead to our Yeah. Well, we'll get the uh, the SMWS Canada Eastern Brand Ambassador back for you. Exactly. Um, yeah. and, but uh, uh, we just taste all the whiskeys. I was like, nah, you won't like this one. That's right. Anybody? Yeah, this one's for me. Kelly, we uh, there also will be uh, Holyrood uh, poured uh, at a table there as well, and, and a ton of other really cool things. So uh, definitely check it out. Yeah, yeah. If you were going to spend money on anything, I mean, besides Scotchmont Whiskey Society bottles in January, mm -hmm. it would be drinking for a good cause, which would be MS. And invite your friends who are like, I don't know what whiskey is, and you make it too intimidating with your big collections. Just bring your friends and then let them loose uh, in yep. the science center and have them come back and tell you what their experience is. Uh, I think it mm -hmm. could be a fun time, but yeah. yeah. Like they'll remember their experience. Yeah. <laughs> You'll remember for That's them. Right. <laughs> Put a GoPro on their head and then send them there, out there's to a the whiskey flaw world. in that theory, like jumping yeah. from 40% to 46 or 50 and above. But, uh, there yeah. will be water. Chris, there's water, there's food. Oh, great. So some and of my friends drown. Nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, as some people science. say, life starts at 50 when it comes to uh, uh, age and alcohol. Uh, so that's probably the best way to go is to start with the gas strain and then work your way down to it's 40 as needed. I'm 56, Evan. Very responsible. That's right. That's Very right. Very responsible. Yeah, so Rob and Kelly won't be there, but uh, Harmony and I will. Uh, uh, Chris will probably be there as well. Uh, I'm I'm assuming you got your ticket, Chris. I have my ticket, my VIP ticket with a cut crystal glass, which I'll probably break that night. But yeah. nice. <laughs> you know, uh, Chris, if you want, I'll I'll hold on to that cut crystal glass and and get it back to you at another time like the uh, christopher moore books that you bored me about uh two years ago yes they just recommended to, to harmony that she should ask you for <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes, i'll, I'll I, get I, a... I and, and i have signed up for one of the master classes for the vip event um nice. and the rest of the time i'm, I'm just going to wander around and i'm going to talk to people and drink some whiskeys hopefully yeah, that's that's my plan too. Even though I'm working, um, thank you all for coming. Uh, we'll see you at the MS Whiskey Festival, and if we don't see you there, hopefully we'll see you at the February O turn. Cheers, everybody! Thanks, Cam, for Good joining night. us. Thank you, Harmony, Good and night, thank you, Robin Kelly, Thanks, as guys. well. Thanks, Thanks for seeing you guys. See you, guys. Awesome. See you next Cheers, week guys. at the Bourbon one. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Take care. Yeah.